You know, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people you know. You're around a lot of people. They don't know anything. They don't have a clue about what God wants to do for his creation. They have no understanding of how big he is, how capable he is, and how much he wants us to have a great life. We're going to look at uh, uh, a clip here just uh, uh, in a moment from uh, Dr. Howard Brown, uh, just uh, going over some things that are transpiring now. Uh, we know that, uh, you know, what has, uh, has happened up to this point over the last, what, 100, 110, 120 days, whatever it's been, uh, uh, there, there will never be an end to it. There may be some variables. There may be some addendums. There may be some different twists, but uh, we're going to be looking at, uh, uh, at strange things uh, for the rest of our lives. And it's important that we continue to stay in the truth, uh, that we stay aware, uh, that we're not caught off guard. God does not want us to be off guard. The Bible says he doesn't want us to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. And, and you must be sure that you understand that everything that we're dealing with is demon-induced. It is all a demonic plot and plan to set us up for the end of time and to set people up who remain ignorant to fall prey to man as opposed to continuing to honor God. How many of you know he said he would never leave us and he would never forsake us, which means come hell or high water, we win. Yes. And it's yes. up to us to take advantage of the authority that he's given us, uh, the dominion he's given us, uh, an opportunity to be fearless and fear free so that we can continue to lead those who have ears to hear out of darkness and into light. Amen? Let's take a few moments and watch this, and I'll get back with you. Now, I want to just share this with you just quickly. Um, you know, busy putting the final pieces together on the book with my co-author on the virus, which will be coming out yeah, in a few weeks just on Kindle, and then the, the, it's going to go to the press. We should have it ready by the fire camp meeting by July. <laughs> But some things that are very important that you understand here tonight, and I'll share a little bit about this tomorrow morning. What you, what you see happening across America is not America. And so what you see is a planned destruction of our police force by outside entities because they want to create to where there's no law and order because they have another plan. The plan is not you in mind. The plan is not the African-American people. The plan is not the Hispanic people. The plan is actually, in fact, nobody. The plan is their own wicked ends. And it's really, they don't care how many people they kill in the process. Now, if you don't understand what I'm saying, then I don't know how to catch you up on it. I'm, We've written about it in the book, The Killing of Uncle Sam, The Planned Demise of the United States. I've been talking along these lines for over probably 12 years now. And then the second book, Killing the Planet, which will catch you up. The first book was about the, Rocker, the Rothschilds and the private central banks which run the planet. The second book is about the, the Rockefellers and the foundations that now run the planet. Everything is run through the Rockefeller Foundation. If you want to find out what's going to happen for America, you're going to have to just go there and see for yourself. So we're not making this stuff up. I, I would love to be wrong. But I'm holding a document in my hand right now. How many were here when I did uh, lockstep? What, three over three months ago? A 50-page document before we went to shutdown. I warned you it was coming, told you. I didn't make it up. I actually sent it to people 
in social, on social media that are conservatives, and they actually blocked me. Because they said I was wearing a tinfoil hat. And I'm pulling a document from the Rockefeller Foundation. Come on. I didn't have anything to do with writing it or making it up. So somebody said, I don't want to believe it. I don't care what you want to believe. You're either going to face the facts or you'll be a slave and you'll die a slave. So this one came out on Tuesday, April the 21st, 2020. And it's a 30-page document. It's on from the Rockefeller Foundation. I have not added one thing to it. And it's called National COVID-19 Testing Action Plan, Pragmatic Steps to Reopen Our Workplaces and Our Communities. All laid out. But they can't do it if there's a police force. So that's why they want to destroy the police force and create total anarchy. Well, they managed to succeed in Seattle and probably Minneapolis and maybe Atlanta, maybe New York City. But they're not going to succeed everywhere. They, they've jumped the gun on this one. Are you listening to me? So uh, when the riots and the plunder didn't work, they want to bring about the resurgence of COVID-19, which this is bogus. They're using numbers from testing, not from cases of hospitalization or deaths. Are you with me? So I'll just read you what's going to be in the final chapter. And I can give you the link to the, or just go to the Rockefeller Foundation yourself and just type in National COVID-19 Testing Action Plans, Pragmatic Steps to Reopen Our Workplace Community, 30-page document. Go see for yourself. I didn't make it up. All right, so it says here, a 2020 Rockefeller Foundation paper entitled National COVID-19 Testing Plan, Pragmatic Steps to Reopen Our Workplace and Our Communities, appeared at the end of April. This document set forth a blueprint for a post-pandemic era. The forward paints a picture of a world in which the virus returns again and again to wreak havoc on the global economy and to ex exact a toll of millions of lives until a vaccine is developed. It states, the bad news is that the United States is not yet administering enough COVID coronavirus tests each week to adequately monitor the entire U.S. workforce or rapidly detect current recurrent COVID-19 outbreaks. Such outbreaks can be expected for the foreseeable future given the new le low level of population immunity which says bogus, as well as the virus contagiousness and widespread geographic dispersion. The location and size of the recurrent outbreaks are difficult to predict. Close monitoring of the medically vulnerable, institutionalized, poor and imprisoned is vital. Since the virus will be recurrent, the paper calls for the creation, watch this now, of a military force to comb the country to track COVID-19 statuses and to hunt down all those who might be infected through contract tracing. It maintains that staffing the required military force of 500,000 soldiers will not be difficult since so many people would be out of work and desperate for work. After insisting that the new Gestapo be brought into being, the paper says that the new military order must ensure that every American is subjected to coronavirus tests within the next six months. Such an undertaking will require the centralization of medical and military authority to monitor the pandemic, deploy resources and remove the bottlenecks. The report says we are proposing our nation come together around the bold and ambitious but achievable goal of rapidly expanding testing capacity to 30 million tests per week over the next six months. This 1330 plan would be achieved, number one, by creating an emergency network for COVID-19 testing to co coordinate and underwrite testing market. Number two, 
launching an eight-week national testing laboratory optimization initiative to increase output to three million tests per week from the current of one million. Number three, investing in a testing technology accelerator to further grow U.S. testing capacity from three million to 30 million tests per week. And then number four, the process of monitoring the pandemic and subjecting the lives of every American, according to the report, must be treated as a wartime effort. Finally, the paper insists that all Americans who have been tested receive a unique patient identification number. It reads, some privacy concerns must be set aside for an infectious agent as virulent as COVID-19, allowing the infection status of most Americans to be assessed and validated in a few required settings and many voluntary ones. Those screens must be given unique patient identification number that would link to information about the patient's viral antibody and eventually vaccine status under a system that could easily handshake with other systems to speed the return of normal societal functions. Schools could link this to attendance lists, large office buildings, employee ID cards, TSA to passenger list, concerts and sport venues to, for ticket purchasing. In other words, if you meet the compliance, you'll be able to move freely, get on airplanes, travel. You'll be able to go into shops, buy or sell. If you do not meet the requirements, you will be limited and then linked with your social score through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you'll being, be confined to zones. In actual fact, end up becoming an outcast of society. This is the plan of the globalist for America. They hate America, they hate this country, they hate everything America stands for. And they want to stop it with every fiber of their being. These people worship Lucifer at the highest levels. They are not atheists, they worship Lucifer. They do not care about you. They don't care about the babies, as you see, the babies are aborted and even infanticide where they murder them on the tables. They don't care about seniors as they are put to death in the hospitals with organ harvesting. And I can go on and on. We're not living in whatever you think is some kind of a utopia here. And this is the plan for global, for the global operation. I've been talking about this for a long, long time. The only hope is Jesus. And the only hope is the body of Christ. And right now, I don't hear many preachers even talking about this stuff. And that's what concerns me more than anything. And they might, you might look tonight and say, I'm crazy. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not crazy. I've got the facts. I know what's going on. And I'm not going to be quiet. And I'm not going quietly into history. So, you know, I was the first one to stand up and get arrested. I'm probably going to be the first one in the next wave of things, because they're telling you, I'm not going quietly. You, you mark it down. I, listen, let me tell you right now, I know what's coming. Somebody said, yeah, but past, if that's coming, you can't change it. It's the end times. Listen, God has given the church a mandate and we have a job to occupy till he comes. Amen. Are you with me? And God didn't put us here to just throw up our hands and say, there's nothing we can do about it. If you've got children, you've got grandchildren, and you want the best for them, then you're going to stand up and be counted just like many have over the years fought for freedom that can even have a city here on this astroturf here on this field in Tampa, Florida, because we have a document called the Constitution of the United States. And unfortunately, those in the higher ups in government have sold America out. That's why they've done nothing about what's going on. Absolutely nothing. I know everybody thinks I'm talking politics. I'm not. Because the, both, both parties are complicit in this thing. The Republicans are just as guilty as the Democrats. At least the Republicans hide behind a couple of niceties. Hello. The Democrats are just openly playing about what they want to do. And now they're erasing American history, which, I mean, you could pull everybody off a statue and they're pulling off people that actually ended slavery. That's how dumb people are. They don't even know. 
You just pulled a dude down and actually freed the slaves. I mean, how dumb can you get and still breathe? And then people want to fight one another. Yeah, why you end up fighting one another? They just continue to steal everything that you have. So all the river members, you know, I'm your pastor. I've never lied to you. I'm always going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. If it means that everybody turns their back on me, that's fine. But no one will have an excuse. No one. No one will be able to say, I didn't know. No one told me. And, and you see, I study history, so I got the facts. I got the facts. So that's why they want to destroy the police department, but we don't allow it. And we sure not going to allow it here in this county. We're going to back the blue all the way. Are you with me? I'm just telling you right now, because if you don't, you're going to have foreigners patrolling your streets with all military weapons, and they care nothing for you. They probably won't even speak your language. They'll speak French and German and Sudanese. Hello? We already have UN military vehicles moving across the United States as we speak right now. That's why this meeting is probably the most important meeting that can happen here with the stand where we're making a stand for the freedom of the gospel. Because if they can extinguish what they're doing now, they will shut the gospel down to where you won't even be able to have church. Remember, we shouldn't be laying hands on anybody according to the who. We should not hug one another, love one another. We shouldn't sing. We should not sing. Everyone should have a mask on, which masks have been known not to protect you. Hello. Amen. You're breathing your own carbon dioxide. Hello. Amen. They even tell people if you, have a, if you have a bad condition, don't wear a mask. Go figure. Praise God. You know, I was sitting there, I was sitting there, and of course we've been aware of this for several months now, and talked about it when we originally watched uh, uh, Dr. Brown as this thing began to start. You know, I want to try and break it down real quick here, how, uh, how simple it actually is, uh, even though the plan itself is uh, so complicated. It is so, so complicated, and it started... Uh, uh, a couple hundred years ago. Uh, and um, one of the things that's the most important for us to understand is, uh, is that behind all of it is money yeah. Yeah. and power. Yeah. Yeah. Money yeah. and power. And that's why the, uh, uh, the Rothschilds, uh, a lot of this began in, uh, in the UK, in England, uh, a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, the Rothschilds uh, uh, control of much uh, much of the world resources. Uh, they've got a banking system that we're a part of in totality, honestly, uh, throughout our nation and throughout the world. And uh, and then you couple that with the uh, uh, who's the other family the uh, the Rockefellers uh, and. Uh, it can all be traced, and it has been. Rodney, uh, in his book, uh, The Killing of Uncle Sam, it's traced in there. I mean, it's a very lengthy, detailed book, um, and uh, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, but, but the bottom line is this. Their desire to get power came to a point where they were willing to do something that honestly, um, it would be impossible to think that intelligent people would buy into it. But the truth is, people have bought into it. Because people over the last couple of centuries have become so lethargic, so apathetic, so unconcerned about anything but their weekend off or their next vacation or their next whatever that they have not seen, and I'm talking about people in the church also, 
that they have not seen the subtle plan to control mankind. Now, you don't have to be an end time, uh, you don't have to be an end time scholar to know that uh, there is a individual, even though there have been many antichrists in the earth since the fall of man, there is going to be one when the church is caught away according to the word of God that will rise to become one who people look to for deliverance, protection, and provision. When we're gone, the church, the bride, all hell will have broken loose. This antichrist person cannot do anything until the church is gone. I mean, to the degree that they want to do it. But we are now living in the run-up to our exit and his becoming visible. And people will be so ready for relief when he shows up that they will allow him to do, to take over every area of their life just so they can get some relief. And according to the Bible, that will be the case for the first half of what is called the tribulation, three and a half years. They'll be talking peace, but the truth is, there will be no peace. Now there will be people during that period of time that will be born again. But I can assure you, if a person isn't and knows about this, I would sure not want to wait till then because the pressure is going to be intense. So what they've done is they have taken a virus. Now Rodney's next book is coming out about the virus in, uh, specifically and um, how they made it and on and on and on which, you know, that's wonderful. It doesn't make any difference. We know it exists. We know that this virus uh, has fatal properties for certain people. Is that not right? But what they did to make it as big as it is, is they blew it up media-wise, because I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to realize that the left, that the far left, that the liberal media is owned have become puppets of this world order. The narrative, everything they say, all that they lean toward, it makes it very, very clear that they continue to push an agenda, even though to many people, the agenda makes no sense whatsoever. Their narrative makes no sense whatsoever. But you know, you keep something, you know, it's like that, uh, uh, the, uh, I don't know who in initiated the, the torture, it may have been uh, Asian, I'm not sure, but the drip. Or you're laid under something, you're tied in there. And after so many drip, drip, drips, huh? You kind of become a drip. You kind of become jacked up. And that's what happens. And you know, a lot of people who have never had much initiative, a lot of people that are never really very aggressive, how many of you know they're very prone to control? Many of you don't remember it because you're not old enough, but uh, uh, there was a, a place called uh, James, uh, Jonestown, uh, a guy named Jim Jones back, I don't know, how many years ago has it been? 45, 40, 40 years ago? Uh, uh, he was out in the San Francisco area, claimed he was Jesus. Now, my, don't you know, you got to be slow if somebody comes up to you and tells you, I'm Jesus. I'm thinking, you know, you don't know much, huh? Huh? I mean, but there are people like that, you know that? Now, I'd like to have a church full of them so we could tell them the truth, so we could point them to the real, to the real Jesus, you know? But the point is, the point is, he took those people all the way to Kool-Aidville. Hmm? Took them all the way down. There are still people living just like that today. 
Huh? They will fall for whatever. And obviously this one. I mean, when they just started talking about toilet paper, as if toilet paper was a big deal, and then there were massive runs on toilet paper, and then you couldn't buy toilet paper. Well, I guess, you know, worst comes to worst, you could just hose yourself down. You know what I'm saying? You could finish and then go outside and just put a hose to your bottom, you know? I mean, it's crazy, huh? Can you imagine? Come on now. Now, I didn't, you know, I didn't go to any of the stores, so I didn't see any of you, but, you know, you may have been there. I mean, I would have not taken me a selfie in front of the toilet paper aisle, you know, <laughs> trying to buy enough toilet paper. Huh? Crazy, but that, you know, just give us enough toilet paper. If we just have enough toilet paper. How, how excited were people when toilet paper, when they, they started having toilet paper again? Yeah. Yeah. Bizarre. Huh? Yeah. People are easy. Yeah, yeah, people are gullible. Yeah. And so here's this... Uh, this virus, and I think, uh, you can just take our state for an example, I think there's been about uh, uh, maybe a little over 500 fatalities in our state. And you know, if somebody wants to put that in your phone, put that in your phone, divide, uh, let's just divide 500 by 2 million. Just divide 500 by 2 million. About 2 million, I think, I think there's 2.1 million people in, in, uh, in New Mexico. 500, 500, zero, zero, and divide it by 2 million, 2, comma, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. Isn't that right? Is that 2 million? Yeah. What's, what, what kind of figure did we get there? Mira no mas. <laughs> Boy, that's a real deadly deal, isn't it? I mean, that's something to shut your state down for, isn't it? I don't even know what that number is. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. That number, look at this number carefully on, on the screen. This number is insignificant. What happened? Oh my gosh, there it is. 0. 0.00025, huh? Okay. We gotta do this because, you know, I just wanted to at least have done this once because yeah. it's so much fun. Okay, so now let's take, uh, uh, Let's see, how many have died worldwide? Has it been 150,000? Does anybody know? We don't know. You know what the second stanza to we don't know is? We don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right. Pastor, are you saying you don't care about those people dying? <laughs> what difference does it make? What difference does it make? You know, people die. As a matter of fact, I'll bet there's been, well, let's take 150,000. Let's say it's 150,000. How many? 113? Let's use one, 132. 132. Pause. Let's use 150 then. We're just going to get them up there. We want their numbers. <laughs> we want those numbers up. <laughs> so let's divide 150,000. This is going to be a challenge right here, yes. Huh? 150,000. Have you already got, got that in there? Yes, divided by, you already hit that? 7.8 billion. <laughs> Is it 708 billion? Seven, seven, what is the, the world population? 7.8 billion. 7.8 billion. It won't let me. <laughs> it won't let you? Oh. <laughs> Must be an Apple thing. Yeah, see if you can get it sideways. That's right. Yeah. Give that phone to somebody who knows how to use it, yes. Does that give you more zero spots? Glory to God, huh? Huh? Me don't know. Must these young kids, they don't know nothing. A ver, what do we have here? Holy Lord Jesus, that's worse than the other one. Boy, they get a lot of numbers over here, but it don't even make any difference over here. Mira. Zero, 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 zero. One, nine, two, three. 
Huh? I mean, that's minuscule in the world. In the world. And they've shut down the world. They've shut down the church in much of the world. And much of the church will stay shut down. And they've just bullied people. And they've shamed you. And if somebody sees you, I told you we were flying last week when we flew back from, uh, from Tampa. Uh, Mom and I and Faith came on, uh, uh, on Friday and uh, PC and PG came on Saturday. But I was sitting there in the plane minding my own business with my mask around my neck. I mean, they wouldn't even let you get on the plane without a mask. But I wouldn't put it on my face. I put it on my neck. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I look over, and this lady on the other side of the aisle looks at me and tells me, put your mask on. Put your mask on. Huh? I just looked at her and smiled. Are you serious? Huh? Are you scared? Huh? So they, they get people in a position. Huh? And it all began with fear. But now I'm thinking this has gone from fear to stupid. This is, this is so dumb. Huh? And now I understand, I was, uh, I understand that uh, our illustrious governor has uh, uh, once again uh, made the edict or whatever they do with, uh, that, that people must wear masks in public. Is that right? Holy, what you call it? Holy poo poo. Yeah. You savvy, holy poo poo? Huh? Are you listening to me? Holy poo poo. So we're going to restrict your oxygen. so that you'll be safe. Uh, It's laughable. Can the virus be deadly? Absolutely. Is it about the virus? Absolutely not. It's about control. It's about control. Again, the riots, did you notice all those rioters? There was not a word said those two weeks about COVID. We didn't report that. We're reporting systemic racism systemic now that sounds severe to me is systemic like all the time every time every day in every way is that what systemic means huh well let me tell you something any racism is demonic but this was not a racism deal hmm this was a control deal. And as, as, as soon as that began to stop some or fade away some, and everybody kept talking about, we have to change, you can't even say white anymore. Yeah. I mean, you're racist if you say white. Yeah. Hmm? It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I don't, you can't say things. They're going to change the names of the teams, but that probably doesn't make any difference because we don't know if those teams are ever going to play again. Because after all, that would be so dangerous if you had those people up in the stands. That would be so dangerous if those big linemen, you know, would hit each other and maybe some, some, uh, Spittle would fly out of their mouth and land on the other guy. Who in their right mind would trust a test from these people? Who in their right mind would submit to a test? Especially if you're somebody who's already articulated what they know you're endeavoring to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, guess what? There are certain people if they've made a connection with them, there are certain people, they'd want to be sure they were positive. 
but not only positive, how about infected? Yeah. Hmm? Look at all the people that have lived through this. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? But yet we've gone to all of this trouble to be sure that we've taken everybody to another lower level so that when the next thing starts, it'll be easy for people to get a hold of it. I understand there's some stores now you've got to, uh, stores in town that you've got to have a mosque. He calls them mosques. I call them masks. You got to have your mosque on, you know? Well, listen, hey, hey, we're going to order and do a pickup. That means I'm going to have to spend less time walking around in your store anyway, huh? And just go pick the stuff up, huh? That's ridiculous. And what, what, a, what a sad deal it is that the bogus, disgraceful, perverted, motion picture industry will never see the light of day again. Hmm? Never see the light of day again. They're not going to get away with it either. Everybody has a price to pay. But you know what? We're believers. We're believers in the Lord Jesus. We learn how to... Do you realize how many people... This has just absolutely demolished their world. But you and I should find out who they are because we got something that will repair their world. And nobody has it but the church. And that's just exactly what Rodney is saying. It's the church, it's the Lord Jesus that is the hope of the world. And sure, there are plenty of people that they'll scream, they'll scream at uh, Rodney or anybody else that realizes what's going on here is that they're conspiracy theorists, but it's as plain as the nose on your face. I guarantee you that influenza takes out many more people than what this has taken out. There are other things that take out many more people than what this is, but they've just used this, as crazy as it is, they've just used it to get the ball rolling for control. And you know, it's about, it's about to end when you drive down the street, and I don't know that any of you have done this, and you probably won't be too excited to do it after you hear what I say, you're driving down the street and you look over and the person next to you is in their car all by themselves with a mask on. <laughs> Holy poo-poo. That's control. I mean, now, now they've got it on for a reason. I mean, they're scared. They are scared. Huh? Pero holy poo poo. Huh? <laughs> there really ain't anything holy about that poo poo. That's some foul poo poo right there. Huh? That's some nasty poo poo. To get a person in a. Can you imagine having yourself in that? Come on now. Now you don't have to repent if that was you, but can you imagine being in a position? Or somebody, what, what, what are they going to tell you next to do? What are they going to tell you next to do? Hmm? I mean, I could say some things really get in trouble. What, you know, what are they going to tell you next to do? What are they going to threaten you with next? Huh? What are they going to threaten you with? I mean, honestly, to this day, I still don't know of anybody that's ever had COVID-19. I've heard of some people that have it, but I, I don't know them. And the people that told me they knew them, I don't know very well. Well, of course there couldn't be too many because there are not many that even died. I mean, Lord have mercy. How, how bogus is this? Not the death of those that died, 
but how bogus is what it's done to the world. But I'm going to tell you what, there was a sleeping giant that woke up. And that's the part of the church that you're a part of. We are not going to allow ourselves to be duped into thinking that this is bigger than the God we serve, than the blood that the Lord Jesus shed. This is not, I mean, this is not even in the same universe as what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And for us to be concerned about, to fold up, to stay at home, to be worried on any level, on any level. If you remember, every time someone came to, uh, uh, to someone in the Bible and that there would have been an opportunity for them to be apprehensive or the least bit fearful, the Lord Jesus himself, what would they say? Fear right, yes. not. Fear not. Not The moment, the moment this thing began to take off, it was so easy to see that it was earmarked for people who had no serious understanding about their relationship with the Father and with the Word. I'm going to tell you, show me a Christian that's fearful about this, and I'll show you a Christian that might not be that might not be. And, and at the very least, it'll be a Christian that's not been around the truth of God's Word. Because I'm going to tell you, once you know Him, and once you know His Word, then you'll know that fear is not His calling card. His calling card is faith, in an unchanging, unwavering God whose word says he will never forsake you or leave you. He's a God that says a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your left hand, but it will not come near you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what do we have to do with that? What do we have to do? Well, we have to go over time. Sometimes you have to go over time. Depending on the depth of the poo-poo, sometimes you have to go over time in order to deliver yourself from the ridiculousness that you're being exposed to. Amen? So let's just take a few minutes over time. I mean, been here all day. Many of you have been here all day serving. Might as well hang out a little bit longer, glory to God. Let's look at, uh, at Second Chronicles. This is what we must do. Now, now get this right. We're going to look at this verse, and we'll break it down here in just a moment. But let, let me be sure you understand this. Everything, everything that has to do with our relationship with the Father... And with the Son and what He's done is personal. It's personal. It's not a husband and wife thing. It's first and foremost a personal thing. Which means in order, in order to stay right, in order to stay effective, we have to have our personal ducks lined up. Are you listening to me? We have to take care of our personal business. In other words, you and I have to understand that God wants a real relationship with us personally. Huh? Up close and personal. That's the way he wants our relationship to be. Which means that's where our responsibility begins. We see in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, this is a familiar verse. It's used, it's been used, I've heard it thousands of times over the years, but uh, we read here in verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, uh, uh, you know, we're believers, we're, we're called, we're, we're called uh, the children of God, those of us that are born again, we're called heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. That's, that's who he's talking to here. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, Amen and seek my face. In other words, uh, have a desire for the relationship we have with him to be solid, 
to be serious. He said, and then if they'll turn from their wicked ways. You know, what does that tell me? You know, I've been in, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I've been in the, in the faith seriously uh, for uh, 42 years. And uh, uh, does that mean that I still don't have to, uh, I, I still don't have to own up to and, and, uh, and deal with issues that need to be dealt with in my life? Now, they may be low life or low, low level uh, 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 alterations and and adjustments that need to be made but anything anything that isn't pleasing anything that isn't right is wicked you know anything you know it's the small foxes the bible says that spoil the vine so it's the little stuff that you let go by that begins to come up and grab you so anyway he's just saying right here that you you have to make a decision you have to humble yourself and pray huh you humble yourself and pray why because you don't have the answers you understand that the only way that you can get the answers and the strength is from Him. That's why it takes humility to pray. Most people don't want to spend time praying. They'd, they'd rather Google the answer. they try and figure out how to get things handled properly instead of praying and allowing the Word of God to become alive to them so that they can be empowered to do what needs to be done according to His plan. So you need to humble yourself and pray. You need to seek His face. You need to turn from your wicked ways, which sim- simply means is that you need to, you need to repent. You, you, he said that then he will hear from heaven when we do what? There's conditions there, aren't there? You've got to humble yourself, pray, turn away from your wicked ways, then he hears from heaven. He didn't hear from heaven when you're not serious about what's going on. He didn't hear from heaven when you're screaming out in fear. He hears from heaven when you're serious about your relationship with him. Amen. He's not some cosmic Santa. All of a sudden, you've gotten in trouble, and now, you know, you'll just uh, uh, say anything to get his attention. That won't get his attention. The only thing that gets his attention is sincerity and faith, glory to God. But he said, then he'll hear from heaven. He'll forgive us of our sin, and he'll heal our land. What does that mean? He'll heal the world? No, it means the land you have. It means the place where you have, uh, uh, where, 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 where you have an opportunity to impact people's lives. Where you are, your land will be good. Hey, where does peace need to be good for you? Right where you are. Right where you are. Where do you need to be confident? Right where you are. Where do you need to be effective? Right where you are. Huh? I don't have a ministry in New York. Hmm? I don't have folks in New York that I deal with. But I got folks right here. I need to be confident right here. I need to be full of peace right here. I need to be full of revelation right here. And what does it take for that to happen? I continue to focus on Him. I continue to pray, most especially in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost where He can build me up on my most holy faith, where He can bring revelation into my heart and mind, where I'm not, where I'm not, I'm not muddy in the waters by trying to figure thing out, things out intellectually. I'm praying directly to Him because that's what Paul told the church at Corinth. He said, whoever prays in an unknown tongue, they're not praying to men. They're praying to God. Hallelujah. We connect with him. What's he doing then? He's preparing us for nonsense like this. When it comes up, we'll say, well, that's not God. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. Hey, they can tell me. They can come up with me to whatever. They're going to have to take me out. I'm not doing that stuff. I'm not doing that stuff. Well, you won't be able to buy or sell. Oh, yeah, well, God will take care of me. See you later. Well, how's he going to do that? He's God. I don't know how he does that, but he's going to do it. He's been doing it for years. No, the thing you didn't have faith in God. So Mark eleven twenty two says, have the faith of God. Have the God kind of faith. So what happens? What happens? What happens when we when we do this? When we honor Him and honor these conditions, then He puts us back in a position where we can be strengthened, where we can be confident, where we can know that He's going to take care of business. You can have faith in God. People would think, you know, well, golly, what, you know, what if I don't get that done? And, and what if I can't go anywhere? What if I can't buy and sell? Listen, if it gets to that point, listen, Jesus is not coming back for some beat up bride. He's not coming back for some kicked in the teeth church. He's coming back for overcomers, glory to God. We're not going to have a bunch of poo on our face. Huh? Hallelujah. We're going out with a shout. We're not going home with a moan. We're going out with a shout, glory to God. So don't, don't be concerned about it. You just trust God. Yes. You just trust God. What's God going to do? He's going to take care of his kids. Yes. Huh? 
He's going to take care of his kids. What, what, what do we do? All things being equal as parents, we take care of our kids. We go the extra mile with our kids, don't we? Huh? Something's going on. We stay up with them late. We do whatever we can do for our kids. Is that right? Huh? Well, listen, God's a lot sharper than we are. Yeah. And he loves us a whole, whole lot more than we love our kids. And so we can count on him to take care of us. So what do we do next? We do Matthew 6, 33. You know what it says. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. Hey, listen, when all else fails, do the word. <laughs> when all else fails, obey the Bible. Seek first the kingdom of God. What does that mean? You read it a lot. You pray a lot. You spend time with people of like precious faith. Yeah. You talk about the things of God. You encourage each other in the Lord. Wherever you work, you work as unto the Lord. You're the first one there. You're the last one to leave. You're not somebody that ever cripes or complains. You do everything as if Jesus was walking right beside you. Because he is. Yeah. Huh? He never leaves you. Hallelujah. He's always there. He's always there to help you, to assist you. So what do we do? We do the word. We do the word. It's not going to keep you from having a good, it's not going to, hey, listen, there, there'll be a better chance of you uh, not being able to fly on a vacation because there aren't any planes. But it doesn't make any difference. God can give you an enjoyable, outstanding life without having to go to Costa Rica or to Eunice. Or to any of the other wonderful spots around us, Maljamar. Huh? Lovington. I mean, we are surrounded by epic vacation spots. Huh? We don't live at the beach, we live on the beach. And the beach that we live on is not bothered by water. It's just miles and miles of beach. Listen, wherever you are, if he's with you, you're on vacation. You are on vacation. Amen. I mean, entering into that rest. And that's what we're supposed to do. We have to enter into that rest. We have to get ourselves in a position where we understand that seeking Him first puts us in the very best position we'll ever find ourselves. And all we have to do then is we just have to avoid all of the talk about what life is supposed to look like or what's supposed to be fun or what's supposed to be enjoyable and just make a decision. No, no, I'm going to stick with his simple plan, and I'm going to believe that everything that he exposes me to and gives me an opportunity to be a part of is going to give me the most fulfilling life I could ever have. And then, when we've got that settled, when we're able to say to ourselves, self, your relationship with God is going to be all you ever need. Then we put ourselves in a position where we can do his mandate. And that's go to all of those around us and preach the gospel to them. Because I'm telling you, there are a lot of people around you, in your family, co-workers, people that you come in contact with, they don't have any idea of what the gospel has to offer. Some of them may be your Christian friends that don't have a clue about what this is supposed to be like. But this is a perfect time. Yeah. This is a perfect time. No, we're not gonna make fun of people. I might a little bit, you may not. <laughs> and I'm really not making fun of them as much as I'm making fun of them because it's so silly. It's so silly to have allowed ourselves to become so vulnerable to the ridiculous. 
especially those of us who declare that we're believers. And then somebody will come, well, what, you know, y'all are meeting together. What if somebody, what if somebody gets that and they die? Well, my God, is church the only place they come? Right, come on. Is that the only place they come? I'm thinking it'd be almost impossible to get it in this place. But, you know, I'm not so sure about Walgreens. Huh? I'm not sure about Albertsons. I'm not even sure how you get the stuff. How do you get this? Has anybody seen a, a coronavirus? I mean, I've seen that picture of that thing so much, I just want to wipe it off the dead gum map, you know? That little <laughs> red thing like it's, you know, like it's un demonio. Ridiculous, huh? I mean, where is it? It's here. It's there. It's everywhere. But nobody's got it. Donde esta el corona? Huh? Where is that? It's an evasive little son of a gun. Is it in a hamburger? Es un, es un, un relleno. Un corona de revent, relleno. <laughs> where, where do you, oh, it's on a toilet seat. Oh my gosh, who sat on this seat before I did? Right. That's what we got Fíjate. <laughs> I hope the person sitting on this toilet seat before I did had their butt washed. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck crazy. Isn't it bizarre? Wash your hands. Wash your hands. They run out of hand sanitizer. Isn't that crazy? You see people, I mean, they're wash, wash for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not even going to rinse them off. Huh? That's ridiculous. How could you get clean enough? Right. That's what we should have done with that T-shirt. You should have had Jesus in a hazmat suit. Yeah. You know? I hope somebody sees this. I might have them put this one on the YouTube, you know? You guys did this to me. I'm going to blame all you guys. I got, get all their names down, Tricia, so we, can, so we can endorse this message because of these people's presence, okay? Absolutely. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. I'm going to keep trusting God. Huh? If I can go out and eat somewhere and I want to go there, I'll go eat. I don't know what they do. They could be peeing in my lemonade for all I know. Couldn't they? They could be peeing in my lemonade. Have you ever thought about that? Heck no, you haven't thought about it. Who would ever think about that? Somebody taking a leak in your lemonade. <laughs> you don't know that they don't do that. How do you know somebody didn't lick your burger? Right. <laughs> Say, oh my God, Pastor. <laughs> do you think somebody had, you think somebody licked my burger? <laughs> I'm preparing us all for a fast. How, how <laughs> what else could you do to protect yourself? Yeah. Holy poo poo. <laughs> Honestly, holy poo poo. I mean, you if you can, you know, there's people thinking about that. I mean, they become paranoid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your countertops are your Aurora. Are your countertops are they clean? I just want to know. You don't know, <laughs> and you don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No countertops. But then they came back and said, you know, really, it doesn't live that good on, on you know, surfaces like that. Well, they don't know poo-poo. Right. right. That's why they switch what they know. Because they really don't know. And here we are, are out there, Mr. and Mrs. Gullible. Oh, my God. Did you hear how this could happen? I mean, you know, have you ever seen if somebody sneezes? It goes like seven or eight aisles away. <laughs> huh? 
holy poo poo. Did you ever see that demonstration where some, there's a lady walking down this aisle and she sneezes and then you see this cloud of whatever it was, little corona babies, I guess, <laughs> floating over the aisles right into the face of these other unsuspecting shoppers are being attacked by this woman's whatever that is corona called. Babies. huh? Corona babies. Corona babies. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun. Hallelujah. Now, you know, there would be people that say that I am mocking a very, 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 very serious issue. I mean, this is a, this is a deathly virus. Well, in the first place, you all can be excited. The only ones that that's really deadly toward from big numbers is people my age. Right. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm way up there in the area of vulnerability. Yeah. Do I look vulnerable to you? I'm going to tell you, I laugh in the face yes. of anything yeah, that on. would try and take me out. I laugh in the face of that stream yeah. of duke yeah. that we've been exposed to these 120 days. This lie from the pit of hell that has people's lives crippled and fearful about a future that God said he would give us. He said, with a long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Don't you dare tell me that anything, anything can disrupt God's plan for my life. Glory to God. I am more than a conqueror. I am not prone to the things of the enemy because he is no longer my daddy. My father God has paid for my protection and my provision. And I will live healthy, wealthy, and wise all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's all I got to say about that. Praise God. Come on. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Don't get me started again. That's the dumbest thing in the world. For the men and women, I mean, you know, those that don't know him, you know, I guess that's one thing. I would have given them credit for being sharper than that. But those of us who declare that we're believers, for us to allow for a moment for that stuff to have drug us in to a place of apprehension or concern, knowing knowing what God has done for us, knowing that he sent his son to hell on our behalf so that we could have a life. Glory to God. He did it on purpose. He put corona on Jesus. He put every foul, despicable disease on Jesus so that we could have an abundant life. And we would dare not grasp that as his promise for our life. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Any tongue that rises up in judgment against me will be proven wrong. It will be proven wrong because that's my heritage as a child of God. No disease, no virus, no plague can come near my dwelling and live in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God. This is a blood-bought body. This is not my body. This is his body. Glory to God. This, he paid for me to be well. He paid for me to be confident. He paid for me to be blessed. Coming in, going out. He said, you're the head. You're not the tail anymore. You're above now. You're not beneath. Hallelujah. Everything you put your hand to prospers in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if anybody else will besides you guys, but we approve this message. Hallelujah. We approve this message. 
I believe this message is right out of the heart of God. I believe this message is something that will encourage people who have still been battling fear and apprehension and concern. Listen, if you're a child of God, you will fulfill all your days in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we give you a hand. We give you a hand. And, and let, let me just, hey, let me just say, you know, I mean, if you need to, you know, if you need to just ask him to, you know, forgive you a little bit for uh, even thinking, even thinking that you had to take any of this on, any of what? Anything in your life. You don't have to take anything on. He has already taken you on. He has already received you in the beloved. He has already accepted you, glory to God. What you need to take on is just your responsibility to believe what he took on. And because he took it on, hallelujah, we don't have to take those things on. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. How are we going to quit this? (laughs) Glory to God. Come on.